The video game industry is worth a lot of money and money is the largest factor towards a game actually getting made. All right, gentlemen, we need to make more money this fiscal year to stay on the up and up. Our charts and graphs here show that the Call of Duty games seem to still sell pretty well. It's a safe bet if we just dump some more money into that and make another one of those and make another fucking Call of Duty. But Valve, Valve is different because making and selling their own games is no longer their primary revenue source. This is not even fucking close. Because Valve has Steam, the most popular marketplace for buying and selling video games on PC, and Steam has over 67 million active monthly users. And Valve? Valve gets 30% of every sale made on Steam. In short, Valve has fuck you money. Actually, they have fuck me money because they have so much goddamn money, they can practically get whoever they want to have sex with them. And I'm not sure how how sex with an entire company works on the physics side of things. I don't, I don't know if you do them like one at a time or if it's like a metaphysical sort of thing, but you get what I'm trying to say. And I applaud Valve. I think what Gabe Newell and his team of hot boys have accomplished since the company's inception is nothing short of innovative, inspiring, and just impressive as all but. They have crafted and published some of the most acclaimed single player and multiplayer games of all time, while also creating a digital platform for indie developers and nobodies to make a name for themselves. But while I'm very proud of Valve, Valve also makes me very sad. Growing up, there were only a handful of companies where I knew I had to check out whatever game they dropped. Companies like Nintendo, Rockstar, and Naughty Dog. And after I played Half-Life 2 and Counter-Strike Source in 8th grade, followed up by the Orange Box, followed up by Left 4 Dead, followed up by Left 4 Dead 2, followed up by Portal 2, yeah, I, I would say it's safe to say Valve has joined the ranks of the camp counselors up here. But Valve, they don't really make games anymore. I mean, they do, but not like they used to. And I'm not even talking about a lack of Half-Life 3. That dream and meme died many moons ago. I have come to terms with that death. I'm talking about fresh new games that rewrite the playbook on what was thought to be possible in video games and provide memorable experiences, whether multiplayer or singy style. The last notable game Valve published is Dota 2. And while that's not something I'm particularly into, I can acknowledge its popularity and overall warm reception. But after years and years and years and years and years of silence, when asked about sequels to their existing franchises or exciting new games. When I have something to talk about, I'll be happy to talk. No, that's fine. We finally got this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's no footage right now because it's obviously just a green screen, but I can imagine how underwhelming of a wet towel it's going to be to see that fucking card game logo. A sick ass card game to cash in on current trends that have already proven to make a lot of money? God damn it, Val. Um, okay, two things, just real quick. Uh, a, uh, how much money is enough money? You've already struck gold with Steam and the Steam Marketplace with skins for games like CSGO and PUBG, but, but apparently, much like uh, me after a, after a long night of dancing, the thirst can just never be quenched, can it? B, uh, what happened to making games you're passionate about? Games where you recognize talent in smaller teams, so you brought them under your wing and made some instant classics. Games where you push the boundaries of what was thought to be possible within the physics of a cyber world. Games where I could kill my brother with a Molotov and then revive him just to do it again 30 seconds later. For better or worse, and I, I'm sure the vibe you're getting from me is worse, which is accurate, that's a good, it's a good analysis on your part, Valve has changed. And I'm not just an unrealistic fool living in dreamland all the time. I can acknowledge that most good things eventually have to meet an end. The creator in me can look at Valve and be like, look man, I totally get it. You guys have worked your asses off through multiple grueling trials and tribulations and come out the other side with some of the best games I've ever played. You have definitely, definitely earned a retirement. Making a video game is one of the hardest things you can do, and making a good video game, well, that's like, that's like, that's like trying to catch a cheetah covered in butter. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> but still, the massive fan in me can't help but be bummed about the current state of something that used to inspire me. Over the years, as Valve has focused more and more on Steam, the Steam Marketplace, and other business ventures, I don't think it's any coincidence that multiple Valve veterans have left the company to move on to greener pastures. As far as the single player story driven games are concerned, practically all of the writers responsible for creating those narratives are gone. Mark Laidlaw, who was largely responsible for creating the stories of Half-Life 1 and 2, left the company in March of 2016. Eric Wolpaw, 
who helped write the Half-Life episodes and Portal games, also left Valve in February of last year. And Chet Falasek, who helped write both Portals, the Half-Life episodes, and personally wrote the Left 4 Dead story stuff himself, left Valve in May of last year. But you want to know what the big V has in common with not only Breaking Bad, but the very slow and painful death of Rare? I might understand why it had to end, but it doesn't make me any less sad that it's over. Counter-Strike Source was the first game I got on Steam, and I still get on to play Ice World Deathmatch to this day. Left 4 Dead 2 was like all me and my friends ever played in high school, and it's still the game we play the most. I have too many fond memories of having LAN parties and playing that game than I can count. I am 100% confident that I will play that game till I die. Portal and Portal 2 are some of my favorite single player games I have ever played, and I have played a lot of video games, and I still get goosebumps when I think about the ending half of that first game. So it's not even that I'm stressing because I don't get to see what happens to Gordon or Alex or Francis and Zoe or Robot and Robot. I'm stressing because it feels like saying goodbye to one of my camp counselors. And it feels like I'm never gonna see that camp counselor make a special new fire or play and sing Kumbaya on his guitar. This metaphor is, this metaphor is not exactly tying up like I wanted it to, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. I only judge you because I care and even though I don't give a single absolute speck of flying frick dust about that new card game, I will always love you. Coincidentally enough, a channel I'm a fan of and, and kind of kind of a buddy of, we, we talked, um, Racevic just uploaded a video about the orange box that is fantastic. He goes super in depth about the development of each of the games and it's like over an hour long. It's practically a movie. I think it's one of his best videos. So if you care about these Valve games, I highly recommend you set aside some time and watch his video as well. But thank you for watching my video. Comment, rate, subscribe, and can we can we go ahead and get some booyahs going in the chat? This is a really sad video, and I think I think we could all use a couple booyahs. Thanks again for spending some time with me, and I hope to see you on Ice World. Merry Christmas.